subject of this journal is about mathematical truth proportions, published in 2021. In this review, three commonly used proportions that included the golden proportion, golden percentage, and recurring aesthetic dental proportions were analyzed and compared to identify which of the mathematical formulas, if any, can be used to provide predictable and repeatable aesthetic clinical outcomes. In 1978, Rabin carried forward Lombardi's work and suggested using the golden proportion for establishing relative to size from a frontal view. He proposed the pursued width of the maxillary center incisor should be in golden proportion to the width of the lateral incisor, and that the width of the lateral incisor should be also be in golden proportion to perceive the width of the canine, the golden proportion should be based on the apparent size as viewed directly from the anterior. In 1999, Snow proposed the golden percentage as a more accurate method for determining and creating symmetry, dominance, and proportion for aesthetically pleasing smiles. Snow used the golden proportion ratio of 10618 for the central incisor, 1 for the lateral incisor, and 0618 for the canine. Snow's concept focused on giving the central incisor dominance to achieve aesthetically pleasing smiles. Words to create aesthetically pleasing smile introduced the recurrent aesthetic dental proportion in 21. He suggested that the proportion of successive widths of the teeth as viewed from the frontal perspective should remain constant as one moves distally. The appropriate RVD proportion differed from short, average, and taller people with values of 80%, 70%, and 62%. The research question for this review was For patients recurring anterior aesthetic rehabilitations, does the use of mathematical tooth proportion result in more predictable aesthetic outcomes when compared to not using such formulas? From a total of 131 articles, 955 articles were eliminated through an initial screening of titles and abstract. The remaining articles were evaluated for eligibility. A total of 54 articles were included in this review. Several studies concluded that there is no evidence to suggest that the golden proportion should be considered the ideal standard in aesthetic dentistry. However, Guerlain found that while the golden proportion was not valid when applied to the measured measure distal tooth proportions, it was relevant when applied to the perceived proportions from the frontal perspective. Most of the studies found on the golden proportion involved an assessment of how it compared to tooth proportions in different population and ethnic groups. In living these articles, 62% of them found that the golden proportion did not exist in their respective population. In addition, only 14% of the articles indicated that they found that the golden proportion exists in the minority of the samples. Only one study that looked exclusively at the golden percentage was identified. The author investigated the two proportions of 100 studies of the 
that were mainly origin and found that the maxillary tooth proportions were 22% for the dental incisor, 60% for the lateral incisor, and 12% for the canine. These findings did not follow the golden percentages. In many studies, no RED proportion existed in the samples. The one author recommended utilizing a RED proportion of 70% for both male and female patients seeking ethnic aesthetic smiles. The other author concluded that the most attractive proportion actually depended on lip position and that a preset RED proportion could not be determined without considering other elements of the smile. Several of the articles reviewed compared two or all three of the proportions and attempted to identify which proportion was the most suitable for predictable aesthetic outcomes. Over half of the reviewed articles advocated that none of the proportions was suitable, whereas the remaining articles proposed that the golden percentage may be applicable if clinician took into account the ethnic background of the patient. Discussion In reading the articles on golden proportion, there are studies about variation in measuring method and line angle and ex external influence factors such as light from camera. Conclusion no studies revealed its findings that supported the use of the 13 mathematical formula to predict consistently predictable aesthetic success. Within the limitation of this review, while the golden proportion seems to be present between the central to lateral incisor in some case, it is rare between the lateral incisor and the canine. The golden percentage may be a good starting point if the ratio is adjusted to take into account the patient's ethnic background. However, clinicians must recognize that these values are only a starting point. Overall, generalized aesthetic ideas do not appear to fit within a mathematical formula and are open to interpretation by both the clinician and the patient. This research is about the dental gingival display through lip border movement. Much of the research on aesthetic dentistry has used artificial and computer generated images to establish aesthetic normals. Altered images are helpful in determining personal preference but may be misleading for natural normals. The purpose of this was to establish an evidence base for clinical guidelines on lip mobility and the visibility of oral tissues. Keywords with medical subject heading terms were used to devise three search strategies that were entered into an open source electronic database in February 2020. Inclusion and exclusion criteria were developed based on the population, intervention, control, and outcome format, and relevant studies were selected. The initial search was conducted based on the search strategy, and a total of 196 studies were identified, and 48 articles were selected for a list. With invest. In 1978, Big and Brundot's data showed women had twice the incisor display of men. In addition, an increase in lazy resulted in a decrease in exposure of maxillary and an increase in that of the mandibular incisors. Individuals with shorter upper ribs revealed more maxillary tooth structure than those with longer upper ribs. Age effects Tooth display in repose was further investigated in a randomized study by R. Ratchan. No difference was detected between races. R. Ratchan's 
research there has been general agreement that as one ages, there is a decrease in the maxillary and increase in the mandibular incisor visibility. Thunder Gert et al. found that the upper lip lengthened approximately 4 mm. The width of lips and rest also changes with age, with a statistically significant difference being reported between intercommissural widths at rest and age. Michi suggests that the maxillary canine would be a reliable clinical reference for accessing the anterior incisor edge position. Al Hababai et al. reported maxillary canine would be a reliable clinical reference for assessing the anterior clinical edge position. Al Watcha reported that Men and women had no significant difference in tooth display at the maxillary center incisor in repose. In contrast, another group of researchers reported that white Brazilian women showed more of the maxillary incisor than men. However, men displayed more mandibular central incisor. Tan et al. In their classic high average and low smile classification found, women tend to have a higher smile line than men. When at R reported that women displayed significantly more gingival tissue in four of the six races or national or report at R evaluated to emotion type of smiles, a social and joyous maximal smile. With the maximal smile, 89% of all participants displayed gingival apical to the cemental enamel junction. The data did support that the social smile of women was broader, broader than men, but with the maximal smile, no significant difference was detected in gingival display. Lin et al. reported that smiles that recruited contraction of the orbicularis oculi, zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major, and levator rabi superioris were more attractive than was produced with only the lithorious masses. In a research that 1242 growing participants were evaluated, but the length of the upper lip was the most influential component in determining a pleasing smile. CDQ et al. reported that a short resting upper lip was not responsible for increased anterior tooth display during a smile, but lip mobility was. Li et al. Research confirmed that the particular skeletal pattern affects lip mobility because there is more space for elevation. Al Jabra et al. and Khan et al. confirmed that greater vertical and horizontal overlap of the anterior teeth caused greater gingival display in a maximal smile. A differential diagnosis was developed for excessive maxillary facial display during a social smile. Four factors were identified. The amount of upper lip evaluating during a post smile, interlabial gap in repose, upper lip length in repose, and anterior height of the maxilla. Effect that altering the occlusal vertical dimension has on lip posture in smiles has also been investigated. Clinicians should be aware of the position of the maxillary incisor edge to lower lip when altering occlusal vertical dimension. Age effects. A socially post smile will narrow vertically and widen transversely with age. Lift in speech. Vander Gert et al. reported the height of the upper lip between the maxillary canines was generally increased with a spontaneous smile than during speech for all ages. In contrast with the maxillary arch, 
the mandibular anterior teeth were more visible in speech than in a smile. An addition study confirmed that mandibular anterior aesthetics should include the observation of speech. Additional facial expression within et al. reported importance of evaluating the combined effect of the middle and lower facial thirds and not only the lower facial third. Another randomized study video recorded maximal facial expressions in the middle and lower facial thirds to evaluate the, their effect on gingival display. A maxillary central lateral incisor, canine and first premolar gingival display were evaluated. Conclusion Lips migrate inferiorly with age. The maxillary canines have the least variability. Video recordings are useful. Women display more gingival than men in social smile. Greater vertical skeletal patterns have greater lip mobility. More vertical and horizontal overlap of anterior teeth display more gingival. When evaluating broader movement of upper lip, for maximal smile, middle and lower facial thirds should be viewed. Having lower smile line, gingival and identical aesthetics have highly visual lore. During speech, mandibular incisors have important role. This report is case report about facial analysis for the digital planning of a full mouth implant rehabilitation. Historically, implant rehabilitation was driven largely by bone location. Eventually, prosthetic design began to play a great role. More recently, the trend has been toward a dentofacial driven approach based on incisional edge position and preoperative lip dynamics. A 65-year-old man presented with concerns about quality of life with regard to his oral condition. His chief desire was to have a fixed prosthesis. The patient reported a history of hypertension, elevated cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes. Hypertension and elevated cholesterol were controlled with blood pressure medication and statins and his diabetes was as well controlled with his HB1AC below 7. When smiling, maxillary gingival margins were not visible. However, patient mandibular teeth Number 27 through 31 were spoilerupted and fully visible in the patient's smile. The clinician recommended the removal of the remaining teeth and the utilization of maxillary and mandibular implants for a full mouth re implant rehabilitation. Five extraoral photographs were taken to establish the dentofacial midline, proper incisor edge position, smile curve, and smile design. These photographs, some of which were taken with the patient wearing a pair of facial reference glasses, comprised a rejective view, smile view, lips in report view, the chain smile view, and overhead were 12 o'clock view. Figure 5, photograph of the patient wearing facial reference glasses with Deutsche smile view. Facial reference glasses are used to locate the dental midline and natural head position, which are recorded by the Coys Dental Facial Analyzer. The clinician used a calibrated digital ruler utilizing digital smile design technology to determine maxillary incisor edge position. In this case, the canine was shown to be 2 mm above the upper lip line. By superimposing the smile image and the repose image, the desired canine position was determined. Adding 3mm 
to the canine would provide uh, appropriate aesthetic result. Upper lip mobility was measured by superimposing the lip pose and Deutsche smile photographs and was found to be 6 mm which is within normal limits. The clinician used the video recording of the patient speaking and captured the screenshot with maximum gingival display. Lower lip mobility was measured at 8 mm. The mandibular incisor showed 4 mm in repose. Therefore, the clinician determined the mandibular incisor position should be reduced in height by 3 mm, leaving a normal 1 mm reveal of the incisor edges in repose. The position of the maxillary and mandibular incisor was established. The upper and lower lip mobility was documented. This measurement allowed the clinician to determine where the gingival tissue to restoration interface would be. This is labeled the transition zone in the photographs. For the digital treatment, four image layer was imposed. The DST planning center provided the digital merging of the layers. The first image layer included the digital smile design, photograph smile view, Retreated view, lateral view, and 12 o'clock view. Lateral view was used to assess the ear line and nasolabial angle. The second image layer was the intraoral scan of the maxilla and mandible. The third image layer comprised the scan of the entire denture with a radiographic marker. And the fourth image layer consists of the CBCT scan with the radiographically marked denture placed intraorally. After all layers were merged by the planning center, the clinician could perform bone contouring and implant planning. For maxilla, to hide the transition zone, bone needed to be reduced in height. The blue line in figure 11 indicates bone level was around 13 mm from the incisor edge of tooth number 8. For the mandible, to hide the transition zone, the bone needed to be reduced to approximately 18 mm from the incisor edge of tooth number 27. Maxillary and mandibular all on floor implant rehabilitation was enabled via adequate restorative space in this patient. Clinical guides were manufactured by the DSD planning center according to the digital plan and consist of four parts, the base guide, pin guide, implant guide, and hybrid provisional guide. The base guide were stabilized over the remaining teeth. Remaining teeth were the extracted and bone reduction. The implant guide was placed. Finally, smart fix abutment and temporary abutment were placed and light cured acrylic was used to attach the hybrid provisional. After six months of auto integration, the patient was satisfied with the appearance and function of provisional restoration. A coist deprogrammer platform was made directly in the mouth on the palatal surface of teeth number 8 and 9. The patient was deprogrammed for one hour and a bite record was taken for the laboratory to mount the final prosthesis. An open tray for vinyl impression was taken with splinted impression copings. The functional pathway were adjusted by positioning the patient in an upright seated position until maximum intercourse patient. The framework choose for the base of the final prosthesis, which is the high performance. Individual crown were made to fit over the framework. 
the use of facial analysis with reference glasses and digital smart design imaging and measurement allow the clinician to fully operatively plan the incisional edge, lip mobility, and transition zone. All on for implant treatment for immediate function and an aesthetic appearance without grafting. The patient was satisfied with uh, excellent aesthetics as well as the function. Thank you for your listening.